Greetings, greetings and salutations, one and all. Welcome, 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 welcome to the night shift. The last healthy love for the month of March. Yep, believe it or not. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I want to say big ups to each and everyone locked in right now. Those on tune in radio, the night shift of DJ Kevin Stew. One harmony radio across the pond. Top of the morning to you guys over there. How you doing? Queen Genius, King Genius, big up his status. I want to say big ups to those tuning in on WGLRO, home of the Dunning Walk Up Morning Show. The people station taking you from the sheets to the streets. They're touching everywhere from Detroit to, Den- to Denmark and all points in between. Big ups to you guys over there on WGLRO. And those on PEMG TV, welcome, welcome, welcome. Of course, those right here at the home of the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew. Glad to have you. Couldn't do it without you. I wouldn't even try. Right here on KevinStew.com. Listen, we're in for some more info tonight. Grab your pens, grab your paper. You might want to take some notes. Well, of course, there's always a video archive, so you, you can always, the show is always there. You need not worry. But if you want to take some notes, you can do so. Call a friend, tell a friend. Numbers to get you in touch, 773-789-STEW, 773-789-7839 gets you in touch with us right here. Of course, you can jump into the stew pot where we keep things bubbling right there on kevinstew.com. Those of you who are not familiar with the stew pot, it's what others call a chat room. We're fancy over here. It's the stew pot. Yeah? Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Starting it off a little bit different today. You know, I gotta be real with you, you know? Yeah, we're keeping it real. Yes. It is what it is. This is the sound of Ever G. And I am who I am. Guarantees no, I do the best I can. I can't play your games. I've gotta keep it real. If you stick around long enough, you know how I feel. A heart is not a plaything, don't you know? Starting off the show a little bit different today. It's called Keeping It Real. Son of Ever G. Want to say thanks to Paul C Media Group for sponsoring this segment of the show. When being in a moment is priceless, you want to give them a call. What can they do for you? Time is so precious and Everything you see right here on KevinStew.com. They can host your website. They can build your website. You got they can provide you with streaming services. Girl. They can capture a moment Girl. that uh, you are having. I don't know how many people are having moments right now. Or they're going to need it captured. Keep social it distancing and all. But everybody is into the social media thing. Answer. 
This will be your uh, So if you're trying to do some broadcasting heart is not a pl- uh, Pulse Media has a solution for you Don't you know Gotta make a decision Will you stay Get my call 754-999-6020 Patient person Or visit them at PulseCMG.com Tell them you heard about them on a night shift with DJ Kevin Stew, yeah? I've gotta keep it real I need to know your answer This will be your deal Hey A heart is not a plaything Don't you know Gotta make a decision Will you stay or will you go I'm a patient person And you know that, that that's a little bit of the sen- of, of the, the sentiment that a lot of people are having right now with uh, the COVID nineteen issue. People are contracting this virus, and some people are not making it. And a bunch of people have resigned themselves to the the thought that listen, you know, if 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 you're not gonna make it, uh, if I have to let you go, then I have to let you go. You know, sometimes we hear these words and we <laughs> we we only look at it one way. There are many ways to look at this. And for the purpose of this show, we're looking at it in a sense of this virus, which is the main top talking point right now. Everybody is talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Um, Not to say that I dare to be different, but I also have some information to present on it and the information that i'm presenting tonight has to deal with the treatment and for for a little while now we've been hearing you know stay away from the the ibuprofen and stay away from the aspirin the NSAIDs the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories you, you need to stay away from those if you test positive with COVID-19. And we, I, I, I don't know how many people got a reason why. I know I didn't get one, so I went looking for one. So tonight we, we, we'll be looking a little bit more. We'll be looking into this, this, this whole reason for this uh, no ibuprofen, no NSAIDs thing. You know, stay away from uh, Advil and... and the rest of them <laughs> that fall under the NSAIDs. Um, and so that's what we're looking at tonight. Now, of course, if you've been following the news about coronavirus, the COVID-19, and sometimes it's referred to as SARS-CoV-2. Well, SARS-CoV-2 or CoV-2 because of its, its similarities to sars well, you know, they're 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 in the same family, the same coronavirus family. So, once you've heard any of the news reports, you've probably heard or seen articles offering conflicting information about the use of ibuprofen. Some say taking ibuprofen may aggravate the infection, while others say there's no such risk. Um, on the 18th of March, 2020. CNN reported the health minister of France, Oliver Veron, Veron, as warning against using non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, the NSAIDs, things like ibuprofen and Advil in in the treatment of fever and pain that's associated with COVID-19, and to use paracetamol or acetaminophen instead of, of using NSAIDs. Now, according to CNN, Veron's recommendation was criticized by some health experts who cited the lack of publicly available evidence. Tariq Jasaravich, uh, or Saravich, depending on where you hail from and your pronunciation, a spokesman for, spokesman, spokesperson 
let me not say spokesman, spokesperson for the World Health Organization. They told CNN they're looking into the matter, but that a uh, cursory review of the literature has failed to produce any clinical or population-based data to support Veron's recommendation. Now, similarly, the U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases told NBC News that more research is needed to evaluate reports that ibuprofen may affect the cause of COVID-19 and that there is no evidence that ibuprofen increases the risk of serious complications or acquiring the virus that of, of, of acquiring the virus that causes COVID-19. The European Medicines Agency that uh, actually issued a nearly identical statement. But the agency also points out that it began its review of in in 2019 after the French National Agency for Medicines and Health Products Safety reported that these medicines appear to worsen varicella, chickenpox, and some bacterial infections also. The French Health Ministry was basically sticking to its recommendation to avoid ibuprofen, saying grave adverse effects have been identified in patients who confirmed or suspected COVID-19 infection treated with NSAIDs. In its latest COVID-19 treatment guideline, dated March 14, 2020, the ministry stressed that the treatment of a fever or of pain linked to COVID-19 or to any other respiratory viral disease should be paracetamol, not to exceed 60 milligrams per kilogram per day or 3 grams per day. Now, while some mainstream news outlets are dismissing the recommendation to avoid ibuprofen as a obsubstantiated obstanti internet rumor that has no specific by, uh, basis. It seems foolhardy to dismiss the whole concept at, at, in its entirety. First of all, if French health authorities are saying giving NSAIDs to infected patients is having adverse effects. And perhaps, just maybe, we should listen. Well, they've had a little bit more time with the virus than we have, right? Clinical research takes time. So paying attention to anecdotal findings from the field may be just a little bit worthwhile worthwhile and at least until the research catches up but in the meantime they are out there dealing with this virus on a larger scale than than we here in the u.s have been dealing with it so i i believe that really gives them a little bit of say in the matter now the british national health service appears willing to err on the side of caution. In a March 18, 2020 tweet, the NHS stated, there is no strong evidence that ibuprofen can make coronavirus worse, but until we have more information, go with paracetamol to treat the symptoms of coronavirus. Unless your doctor has told you paracetamol is not suitable for you, it, it is what you pretty much want to go with. Because here's the deal. Again, they've had a little bit more experience <laughs> with, with dealing with this virus than us over here in the U.S. In the, there's a medcram video where Dr. Roger Seholt reviews some of the benefits and draw, drawbacks of NSAIDs. As an example, while they were, they've been shown to inhibit viral replication, which is a good thing, they also stop antibody production, 
that is not such a good thing. In fact, it is said to be a bad thing when you're fighting a highly virulent virus. He also discusses compelling data suggesting the advertising for and widespread use of high doses of aspirin during the 1918 influenza pandemic coincided with the spike in deaths in October 1918. So, you know, it, it's kind of like connected with that. Aspirin usage went up into... And they were using it in high doses, and so did the death rate. And the aspirin was being used to combat the, 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 the symptoms of the, the flu virus back in 1918. So, what could we possibly learn? 773-789, Stu gets you in touch. 773-789. 7839 you can call you can text i encourage you to do so also those of you who are 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 overseas um and you can't call or you can't text never fear you can skype kevin that stew is a skype handle and even better than that kevinstew.com you don't have to worry about anything just jump in the stew pot you can remain anonymous. You can hear your views, share your points. It's a judgment-free zone. You have nothing to worry about. Absolutely nothing. The only thing you have to... Well, maybe you have to worry about me actually seeing what you you had put in the pot. But outside of that, you know, typically I don't miss it. So feel confident that, that, that you can share. So... Another source that has added fuel to the debate is the the letter. Which letter? Well, we're going to get into it. Our patients with hypertension and diabetes, mellitus, mellitus, at risk for COVID-19 infection. And this was published in the Lancet Respiratory Diseases uh, on March 11, 2020. Now, you might be wondering why now at, on March 31st you want to be talking about some of these things. Well, hey. Information is relevant, right? And most times it's relevant to time. But if you don't put all the information together, then you're going to be presenting what, when. So, just take it in and then go ahead and if you need to go do some more research now the letter points out that the most prevalent um comoro comorbidites i don't know um the most prevalent comorbidites among patients with severe covid-19 infection and patients who have died from the infection are high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, and cerebrovascular disease. Now, a commonality among all these conditions is that they're all frequently treated with ACE, ACE inhibitors. That's angiotensin-converting enzyme, ACE inhibitors. These are drugs that relax and dilate your blood vessels. Ultimately, none of these three studies that have looked at comorbidites in COVID-19 cases has included data on the drug treatments patients were we're, we're actually on for those conditions. And that is something that, you know, you kind of really need to pay attention to. Because a lot of, the, a lot of the, the, the cases that we've heard, you know, people are, are, are dying from these things and, you know, they're at, at a certain age, you're on the risk of not recovering and such. 
well, there are other questions that you pretty much need to ask. You know, were there pre-existing conditions? And if you didn't know of a pre-existing condition, was there another condition present when the testing was administered? Sometimes a lot of people don't know that they actually have something until they go and get tested for something else. So we don't know what is going on with us a lot of the times because there are a lot of people who haven't been frequenting the doctors as they should. And here is the problem. By the way, a comorbidity or comorbidites uh, refers to simultaneous presence of two chronic diseases or conditions in a, in a, in a patient. So in this case, we're, we're looking at um, high blood pressure, we're looking at, at, at diabetes, we're looking at cardiovascular conditions. A March 17, 2020 report by the Italian Instituto Superiore di Santi Sanita points out, you like my Italian? It points out that more than 99% of those who have died from COVID-19 in Italy had previous medical conditions. There we go. Now, this should not necessarily surprise us, considering a majority of deaths occurred in people over the age of 80. The average infection age in Italy is actually 63. About half of those who died had three or more previous medical conditions, while the other half had either one or two. Of the 2003 deaths reported, only three had no previous medical history. Now, there's also entirely different reasons for avoiding NSAIDs as well as other fever reducers, also called antipyretics. Those in the, in the medical field would be more familiar with, those, with that term and pretty much like it. But when you have a fever, and that has to do with the fact that the, the fever is your body's natural way of, of fighting uh, an infection. So it's your body's immune response. It is the way your body kills pathogens. So this now is one of the reasons why it is suggested to encourage the use of sauna as, as, as regularly increasing your, body, your core body temperature to help prevent infections. It's not the first time you're hearing this and if it's the first time you're hearing it, you might want to pay attention. The rise in the core body temperature allows your white blood cells to more efficiently identify and kill virus-infected cells. Taking an over-the-counter fever reducer will interfere with this crucial process and could potentially allow the infection to run just a little bit longer, causing more damage in the process. Does that sound familiar? How many people are going back in their memory to hear somebody talk about, Yo, you know, let the fever run its course? Unless, and we'll get into that. So a number of studies have looked pretty much at this issue, coming to the conclusion that treating fever can prolong and exacerbate illness. A better alternative provided that your temperature doesn't get dangerously high, is to get plenty of bed rest, drink lots of fluids, and, yes, you guessed it, sweat it out. As it is noted in the American Academy of Pediatrics policy paper, Fever and Antipyretic Use in Children, many parents administer antipyretics even when there is minimal or no fever. Because they are concerned that the child must maintain a normal, quote-unquote normal, body temperature. Fever, however, is not the primary illness, but it is a physiologic mechanism 
that has beneficial effects in fighting infection. There's no evidence that fever itself worsens the course of an illness or that it causes long-term neurologic complications. Thus, the primary goal of treating the febrile child should be to improve the, child, the child's overall comfort rather than focus on the normalization of body temperature. How many of us parents had gotten it wrong before? You know, the fever goes to uh, 101.2 and it becomes, oh my goodness, we, we, we have to make sure to bring this down. And it's, it's, this is dangerous. We, you know, we, we, I don't want my child to have a seizure. And many of us parents, we've, 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 we've been there. Versus maintaining constant watch. We start to panic and to think that we need to bring this fever down. We need to get back to normal body temperature. So that the, the child, the patient, can recover. But could we have been doing more harm than good? We're going to take a quick little break. When we come back, we talk a little bit more and we look at how the fevers work and what administering these NSAIDs, how they affect the, the treatment of the COVID-19 virus. Call a friend, tell a friend. You go, you come back and bring somebody back with you. It's a night shift to DJ Kevin Stew. Healthy love. Tonight we're talking about NSAIDs and COVID-19. Oh, I didn't, I didn't put up the topic. There we go. Um, for those watching, um, no NSAID for COVID-19. There we go. All right, so we're going to take a quick little break. When we come back, we talk some more, okay? We'll be right back. Pulse Media Group, innovative... Pulse Media Group, innovative streaming and recording has done it again. A new way to get your business in full view of your neighborhood consumer through AdShare TV. It's available in your neighborhood today. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. Become a host today and place a TV monitor in a strategic location so it's easy to see. Get a one-minute video ad or longer that plays anywhere in our network. Can't be a host? No problem. For a few dollars, we'll run your 30-second video ad. A host can run announcement specials like buy one get one free or discount ads. Let's turn your flyers into a 30 second video with music or a voiceover or let us create and run your video ad with a spokesperson. Take advantage of our early enrollment discount. Join us today. Your ad will be seen at least 30 times per day in your AdShare TV neighborhood. It's easy. Just call us 754-999-6020. AdShare TV, part of Pulse Media Group. It takes an entire village to raise a child. Hello, I'm Paul Campbell, here to talk about Palace. Peace and Love Academic Scholarship. This nonprofit group supports students facing serious obstacles from entering or continuing their studies, not because the grades are failing, but due to the lack of financial support. Over the past eight years, Palace has awarded 600 scholarships valued at approximately 50.3 million Jamaican dollars or 415,000 US dollars. Together, we must build a better future for our children. Please visit www.palace1.org and make your donation to brighten the future of a deserving child. Palace Preserving young minds for posterity. 
Come on, smile. Oh, honey, he's still not smiling. Maybe he's not a smiler. Yeah, maybe he's just not a happy baby. Maybe he's just being a boy. Or maybe he's teething. Maybe it's just a phase. Maybe he has autism, and we can definitely do something to help. Maybe is all you need to find out more about autism. No big, joyful smiles by six months is one early sign. Learn the others at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. With this in mind, and encouragement received during a South Florida media conference, The Church Links was birthed. The Church Links is an interdenominational worship service portal for churches, providing the tools to spread the word through technology in a cost-effective way. The Church Links www.dahchurchlinx.com Your links to worship and praise. Hey yo, this is Carman to let you know that right about now you are logged on to DJ Kevin Stew on the night shift. Don't move. Be your Welcome back to the show. You can take what you want to take what's the sound of Rupi. I'll be okay, be okay, be okay. Once I've got my music, track is I'll be okay. And that's what we hope and that's what we pray. In the midst of all that's happening, we pray that everyone will be okay. Those diagnosed, those treating the ones diagnosed. And the family and friends of those diagnosed with COVID-19. Because in the mid, you know what, it, it, it's, it's here. And at the end of the day, we can either accept it and try to treat it. Or deny it and stay in a state of denial. But either way, it's right here. I want to say thanks to out there and our healing heavily hands for sponsoring this segment of the show. Out there is using a licensed massage therapist operating out of Broad County, North Miami, Dade, and South Palm Beach counties. 
She comes to you with her table and oil and her magical heavenly healing hands. Give her a call, 954-655-9000. Or email her at theolater at att.net. She comes to you. Only requirement is that you get off her table when she's done. And go, go to sleep wherever you feel comfortable. It's on a rupee. It's called I'm OK. Well, no, it's called I'll Be OK. And uh, I definitely will be OK eventually. So, uh, for those of you who are just tuning in, welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad to have you. For those of you who just brought someone back with you, thank you very much. And uh, welcome back. All right, so we're talking about NSAIDs and the coronavirus. And we're looking at how fevers work with, with when it, when, when what is going on when we develop a fever. One randomized control trial published in 2005 found critically ill patients were giving, given acetaminophen and cooling blankets when their fever went above 38.5 degrees Celsius. That's about 101 degree, 101.3 degrees Fahrenheit. The, the patients that were given these these given this treatment, the cooling blankets and the acetaminophen, they suffered far more infections and had a higher mortality rate than those who received no treatment until or unless their fever reached 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And as are reported by the authors, 44 patients were randomized to the aggressive group and 38 patients were randomized to the permissive group. There were 131 infections in the aggressive group and 85 infections in the permissive group. There were seven deaths in the aggressive group and only one death in the permissive group. The study was stopped after the first interim analysis due to the mortality difference related to the issues of waiver of consent and mandate for minimal risk. Conclusions? Aggressively treating fever in critically ill patients may lead to a higher mortality rate. I'll say it again. The conclusion? Aggressively treating fever in critically ill patients may lead to a higher mortality rate is that good or is that not so good to me that's not so good here's another quote from a 2002 paper fever beneficial and detrimental effects of antipyretics published in current opinion in infectious disease Considerable data suggests that fever has a beneficial effect on the outcome of many although not all infections because nothing is said to be perfect. No one size fits all, right? For example, a survey of patients with community-acquired pneumonia showed that those with temperatures above 37.8 degrees Celsius and a leukocyte count of above 10,000 cells per millimeter had a 4% mortality rate, which compares with a mortality rate of 29% for patients with neither fever nor leukocytosis. Improved survival had also been shown to be shown in febrile patients with Escherichia, Escherichia coli bacteremia, and Pseudomonas. Oh, there's more to this. Pseudomonas uh, aeruginosa. Is that how that is said? Ar aeruginosa or aeruginosa sepsis relative to afebrile patients. Numerous animal studies 
have shown an inverse correlation between mortality and temperature during serious infection. In one such experiment, the survival rate increased from 0% to, to 50% in mice with Klebsiella or Klebsiella pneumoniae or what, what is this? Klebsiella pneumoniae peritonitis. Is, is, there, uh, is that pneumonia? That's pneumonia, isn't it? Again, I have a DJ before my name and not a DR. So all those who have the DRs and know the DRs, you know, can call them up and say, hey, listen, uh, Stu has a question for you. But um, the, the, the study had a survival rate that increased from 0% to 5% in mice with pneumonia when their temperatures were raised artificially from normal to febrile levels. Heat shock proteins are increased with sauna use. You know, the sauna was mentioned earlier, right? Just just to stop what I what I was getting into really quickly. We mentioned raising the core the body's core temperature earlier in the treatment of infections or treatment of viruses. And um what we're going to look at now is heat shock proteins and how they protect against septic shock injury. Now, heat shock proteins are increased with sauna use. There's a study, Fever, Beneficial and Detrimental Effects of Antipyretics, yet again being quoted, and it also addresses the use of antipyretics in sepsis. And what they were saying is... Many people believe that fever, uh, blessings, blessings to you, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show, bro. Um, many people believe that fever potentiates tissue injury during sepsis and should therefore be suppressed. In fact, encouraging results obtained in animal models have raised hopes that antipyretic therapy can be used to improve outcomes in patients with sepsis. However, to date, only one randomized clinical trial has studied this question in humans. It found that ibuprofen did not improve survival in patients with sepsis, even though the drug did have a salutary effect on core temperatures and metabolic rate. Recent data demonstrating fever-induced expression of several heat shock proteins protective against oxidative injury raise the concern that by suppress suppressing the expression of such proteins, antipyretic therapy might actually potentiate the adverse effects of sepsis in some situations. That very last part there is acceptable to the current discussion about ibuprofen in COVID-19 treatment. As detailed in High Heat May Kill the Coronavirus, when your core body temperature is raised, be it due to a fever or from sitting in a sauna, heat shock proteins are activated, which actually suppress viral replication. That was proven. Now, as noted in the fever, beneficial and detrimental effects of antipyretics, heat shock proteins also protect against the oxidative injury that occurs in sepsis. Now, considering the COVID-19 is a viral infection that in severe cases can trigger a cytokine storm, the same thing that happens in sepsis, it seems reasonable to be at least a little bit cautious about using ibuprofen to lower a COVID-19-related fever. 
You see how it comes back full circle? Now, with it being declared as a pandemic, COVID-19 continues to take its toll on people's health. And thousands have already fallen victim to this mysterious illness. But as the virus spreads quickly, so does the misinformation surrounding it. In these times, these trying times, you must learn to separate fact from fiction. And you, you want to do this so that you can take, make the, 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 take the correct precautions and exercise the correct measures to safeguard health. You know, you, you, information that we're given on, on this virus, we, we need to take it into consideration and apply a little bit of not, not a, a little bit of wisdom. Let me not say knowledge, but apply a little bit of wisdom. Because we don't have all the information. Hence, we don't have all the knowledge that, that may be necessary in addressing the, the, the treatment of this virus. So, here it is. We have uh, a few countries that have gone through this. And they're saying, hey, listen, you know, there, there, there are some things that you might want to look into as it relates to this virus. And based on our experience, this is something that you might want to take into consideration. As it relates to NSAIDs, be wary. Because of, of these other things. What other things? Okay. You, you have... I'm sorry. You have the effects of, of these NSAIDs and, and what they do and how they work. And if the virus operates this way, then the NSAIDs could be counterproductive in the treatment of these viruses. As, as for one, we are aware that we are, we are very much aware <laughs> that it may come with a fever. Okay? So we have a fever. We are aware that fevers are necessary in the fight against viruses fight against infection so why would you then want to take the fever away if it is a good way to fight against the virus and 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 i, I believe that is where they were going really and truly with this this antipyretic and using that in the treatment of covid19 that's one of the things that they, they really wanted to put into perspective. A number of times in the information I presented, they mentioned the sauna. Raising the body's core temperature. Okay, so not everybody can go to a sauna. Not everybody has running hot water in where they live. So even the whole idea of creating a sauna in your bathroom where you run the hot water a little bit and you go stand in the shower and you might want to add a few drops of, of, of um, eucalyptus oil in, in the shower. So you, you add that to the steam and that also helps. And, it, you, you know, when, whenever you had a sinus infection, I don't know how many of you ever did this, where you'd get a, a basin of hot water and you'd put a towel over your head and over the basin. And you would just sit there and inhale the steam. And it would help on so many levels. I was having a debate. Uh, it's an ongoing debate ever since I, I came across this information that someone had, had created a video and said, you know what? <laughs> you, the, the virus is susceptible to heat. COVID-19 is susceptible to heat. So one of the things you want to possibly try is just getting a regular blow dryer and blow hot air on your face and so that you can 
inhale is hot air. Hot air. See, here it is. Someone that is saying they, they, they still do the the steam, the hot water in in the basin, and do the towel over the head to the steam. Thank you. So l- let me let me ask you. You can possibly give me your opinion on this also. They were saying, you know what? There is no proof that this hair dryer thing works in the fight against COVID-19. My question was, okay, what proof do you have that it doesn't work? Because if raising the body's temperature, or in this case, as it relates to this respiratory, uh, what do I call it? Well, it is a respiratory uh, affecting virus. So the the virus resi- resides in the lungs. Best way to get to the lungs? Through the nasal cavity. So you have your sinuses there and, and such. And it's cool there. You know, and, and typically what where as it relates to the comfort of our homes, we keep our homes pretty much cool. And so we're always inhaling cool air. Our hospitals they are kept pretty cold, so it's cool air. Um, these breathing treatments that they get, though, what kind of air is that? Is that like a humidifier? Is is that the kind of air that they're getting? This warm air. Anyway, I'm just asking a question. So here it is. Going back to the blow dryer thing. So uh, there's this the, the video basically went on to say get a, a a blow dryer and regulate the amount of air that is coming out of the blow dryer. So you put it on low and in addition to putting it on low, but you have it on heat. But it's just the the speed of the fan is on low. And you would cover the vents at the back. To regulate the amount of air that is sucking in. So although you have it on low. You're even reducing the air a little bit more. And so you're blowing this hot air towards your face. And to keep the area moist. You spray a little bit of water on your face. So that was the first time I came across that. And I was telling a friend of mine. And they were saying you know. I, 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 I don't trust that. Because now you're looking at the burning of the sinuses due to this uh, this heat that you're applying to the to the face, but I'm like, but isn't that what the spring the spray bottle is for? And spraying the water, spritzing the water on your face, doesn't that take care of that? And there's and and they were saying, you know what? <laughs> They're pretty much just adding fuel to the fire. And I'm like, so wouldn't that be better? than the alternative if it actually works. Now, if it doesn't work, they're a little bit uncomfortable and they have the virus. Worst case scenario. Best case scenario, they're a little bit uncomfortable and they don't have the virus. So, what do you have to work with here? So, here we go. Now, I came. Up, someone sent me a video about... A young lady, a, a young, there's this young lady in the video that said she went to get tested and they tested for two things, for the flu and for COVID. And basically we're saying if she tested positive for the flu, then they would not be testing for COVID. So they tested for the flu and she didn't have the flu and they didn't test for COVID. Go figure. But then she was coughing the next day. And she said the coughs came in, in, in bursts. It wasn't just a one cough or a one and two cough over a period of time. No, it was like 10 coughs all at once. Cough, 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 cough. And I, I've, I've experienced something like that. And it's not pleasant. And she spoke of not being able to breathe properly and the discomfort that came along with it. And so... Apparently, she had gotten the same information about the blow dryer thing. So she decided, you know what, let me try it. 
and she did the blow dryer and the spray bottle and she sprayed the water in her face and had the hot air blowing and the water on the face and the hot air blowing and she said that was probably the day before and then the next day she got up and she was feeling so much better and a lot of the symptoms had gone away and she was breathing better and now she was talking and the cough there would be a a, a one-off cough and i was like hmm so there could be some truth to this who am i now to say that you know the the the, the hair dryer didn't work if a sauna will help if the running of the, letting the, vi- the the fever run its course in someone that has a fever and 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 as a result has an infection and there's a fever and the fever does not go over that 104 threshold it's being monitored it doesn't go past 103 for argument's sake or in most cases we see 102 102.1 right so it doesn't go past 102 um isn't the body doing what it was designed to do if we give a little bit of help and we do this hot air into our sinuses how how damaging is that look at the places that actually have this virus in high numbers and the places that have it in low numbers places look at places like south africa now the argument can be that cases are not reported as much because they don't they may not have the resources to collect all the data and whatever else Uh, well look at australia they have low numbers of cases is it that they addressed the matter before look at jamaica less than 50 cases confirmed are you saying that jamaica doesn't have the the necessary tools to 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 document cases and to 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 treat to not, not to treat but to test for cases in the caribbean on a whole how many confirmed cases have you heard so even when you take that into consideration you cannot leave out the heat factor there are people that are saying but you know south florida is hot why is it that south florida is is, is being considered the epicenter of of the outbreak in florida well that's the news and if the majority of people are traveling into South Florida versus North Florida and they're coming from places that have the virus, what are the chances that more people will bring the virus to South Florida? Just doing using the laws of numbers. What are the chances? So th- those are the things that... that, that we really need to look at and we need to go ahead and and find more information do your own research all all i'm here to do is to to whet your appetite i'm not here to satisfy your hunger so i have raised the question your job now is to find some more information and the, the the information that i have presented to you you can do one of two things you can find information that confirms it or you can find information to refute it. Either way, I'd be happy to hear back from you to see what you have found. 773-789-STU. You can send me a text. You can give me a call anytime. 773-789-7839. You know, especially now, I'm more available now. <laughs> I'm more accessible now. Uh, so give me a call. We're going to take a quick little break. When we come back, we're going to talk some more. Uh, look at we're gonna look real quick at at some um the best disinfectant for surf surfaces 
Because, you know, people are touching things, touching surfaces. So what are some of the best disinfectants that we can use uh, to, to clean some of these services? surfaces? Sorry. We're going to come back in just a few. Call a friend, tell a friend. The night shift is on. And after we talk a little bit more, then we go into our musical therapy. Are you down? I'm down. I want to be down with you. <laughs> we'll be right back. When being in the moment is priceless, consider the ability to share that moment. If you can video it, you can broadcast it. And Pulse eMedia Group has the tools you need. Weddings, birthdays, funerals, graduations, church services, parties, seminars, you name it. Pulse eMedia Group can provide you with a secure medium controlled by you to broadcast your event. Contact us at www.pulseemediagroup.com for more information. Pulse e Media Group, when being in the moment is priceless. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, in math, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. And in gym, in biology, I learned that I'm pathetic that I'm fat, and a joke. In history, in I learned that I'm trapped. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In English, I learned that I make people sick. And, in and at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. And in, in chemistry, I learned that no one In biology, me. I learned that I'm fat and stupid. In English, and in I math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn... is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. With this in mind, and encouragement received during a South Florida media conference, The Church Links was birthed. The Church Links is an interdenominational worship service portal for churches, providing the tools to spread the word through technology in a cost-effective way. The Church Links, www.dahchurchlinx.com your links to worship and praise. Greetings and salutations, one and all. You're invited to tune in to the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew. It airs on Mondays with Community and Finance, Tuesdays with Healthy Love, and Wednesdays with Real Talk from 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern Time. Come spend some time interacting in the stew pot where we keep things bubbling and wind down in musical therapy. The Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew is on kevinstew.com, where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment. It's Christine representing for DJ Kevin. You see me, I say, I don't know the boss. You see me, I say, DJ Kevin Stew on the Night Shift radio show. Yo, it up the thing, turn up the thing loud. Whoa! DJ Kevin Stew at the heart of a champion. Never underestimate, just choose him. The silver line and the dark clouds. DJ Kevin's to believe in and that's no doubt. Sell out the match if we the show Chris Sint is a hot to talk. Rastafari. Celestia the first. It's the uprising. And we love to steam our herbs around the fireplace. Yes, I'm inviting each and every one. Positive one to come and steam with your rising around the fireplace. Rastafari. I sit around the fireplace. Fire, fire. Sit around the fireplace. Sit down, sit down. Come around the fireplace and sit some steam on. I sit around the fireplace. Fire, fire. Sit around the fireplace. Sit down, sit down. Come around the fireplace and sip some steam. Steam, 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 steam
What a sweet sensation. What a cool vibration. Coming from above, coming from out of Mount Zion. Steaming herbs from iration to the fullness of light. Coming from above, coming from the conquering lion. I took on the fireplace. Fire, fire. Sit around the fireplace. Sing up, sing up. Come around the fireplace and sip some steamers. I took around the fireplace. Fire, fire. Sit around the fireplace. Sit down, sit down. Come around the fireplace and sip some steamers. Steamers. Steaming gives you a higher meditation. Purify your mind to greater elevation. Coming from above, coming from out of Mount Zion. Gives you strength and good inspiration. I book of life with all information. Coming from above, coming from the conquering lion. I up around the fireplace. Fire, fire. Sit around the fireplace. Sit down, Come around the fireplace and sip some steamers. Steamers, steamers, steamers. I up around the fireplace. Fire, fire. Sit around the fireplace. Sit down, sit down. Come around the fireplace and sip some steamers. steamers, steamers Take steamers. it away. Welcome you back to the show. It's a night shift to DJ Kevin Stew. Healthy love night. What a sweet sensation. I want to say big ups to Glo- Reggae Global Entertainment for spawn. Thank you for sponsoring this segment of the show. Steaming herbs from Iration. Reggae Global can act as your booking agent. They can take care of your tour management. They can do your publishing, your copyright, your legal contract. Sit around the fireplace. Let's give them a call 954-998-8034. Let them know you heard about them on the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew. Sit around the fireplace. Sit down, sit down. Gather around the fireplace and sip some steamers. The sound of Uprising Roots. The track is called Steamers. Yeah, you know, it, it sounds like when you listen to the words of that song and you envision the words. You see a group of individuals gathering around uh, a pot and you would you envision them having a good time and interacting with each other. Guess what? These guys, Uprising Roots, that's exactly how they live. They, th- th- that, that song is a literal song. That's, that's, how they, that's what they do. You know, they would gather around the, the fire and they would cook up a pot or a few pots and they would steam their food and that that would be the thing that would, that's a real thing and I, I thought that was one of the coolest things ever so big up to Uprising Roots the, the, the track is called Steamers alright so back to what we're talking about tonight on Unhealthy Love here with the addressing what everybody is talking about is on everybody's lips and everybody has their speculations everybody has their doubts everybody has their beliefs tonight we're looking at the treatment of COVID-19 with NSAIDs and what some of the possible risks are with doing that but in addition to that we're going to look at some of the best disinfectants for surfaces. Now, with COVID-19 being an enveloped virus, 
being a single strand RNA enveloped in a bubble of lipid or fatty molecules. It, the COVID-19, as well as other coronaviruses, is highly susceptible to soaps and disinfectants. So that is good news. Some disinfectants are more effective than others, but and we, we're going to look at some of those really quickly. Now, while there are many chemical disinfectants, there are, we're going to try to look at the ones that are more readily available for home use. And you know, you can you can you'll be able to learn about other disinfectants and sterilizing agents and you can go ahead and, and, and look up some of those things online also. Firstly, we're going to look at alcohol-based disinfectants. These will contain either ethyl alcohol or isopropyl alcohol at various levels of strength. Some say 50% or greater. Some say definitely you want to go with at least 60%. Now, while alcohol primarily kills bacteria, it also has potential or potent fungicidal and virucidal activity at concentrations above 60%, which is why they say, you know, over the treatment of, of, of COVID-19, you want to get at least 60% alcohol. Now, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the microbial action of alcohol is thought to be due to its ability to denature proteins. Straight ethyl alcohol is less bacterial, uh, bactericidal than alcohol mixed with water, as the presence of water allows proteins to be denatured more rapidly. Now, when it comes to viruses, different alcohols are more or less effective dependent, depending on the type of virus that we're looking at. Ethyl alcohol, provided the concentration is higher than 60% of ethyl alcohol, it effectively inactivates lipophilic viruses, things like the influenza virus and coronaviruses, but not all hydrophilic viruses. Isopropyl alcohol while killing lipid viruses like coronavirus, isopropyl is ineffective against non-lipid non -lipid enter enteroviruses. So if you're using alcohol-based disinfectants to inactivate and protect against coronaviruses on surfaces around your home, you want to make sure it contains between 60% and 80% alcohol. And this is according to the World Health Organization. And they said alcohol solutions containing 60 to 80 percent alcohol are most effective with higher concentrations being less potent. This paradox results from the fact that proteins are not denatured easily in the absence of water. So you would think the, 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 the more concentrated the alcohol, the better off you are. Yes, but up to a, 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 a specific point. So there's a limit. You know, they say too much of one thing is good for nothing. Here is a situation like that. Now, what is more? While alcohol-based disinfectants are highly effective against gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, they can be more or less effective against viruses depending on the type of virus. They t they are quite ineffective against non-enveloped or non-lipophilic non viruses, but tend to work better against enveloped viruses, which is what SARS-CoV-2 pretty much is. Now, keep in mind that for hand sanitization, um, soap and warm water, most effective. Only use alcohol-based hand sanitizers if soap and water are not available. Then you have your chlorine disinfectants, like your household bleach, which typically contains 5.25 to 6.15% sodium hydrochloride. 
And these have broad antimicrobial activity and effectively kills bacteria, fungi, viruses, including the influenza virus. And it has several major biological drawbacks. Several. Bleach can irritate your mucous membranes. It, can de it decomposes, forming deadly gases when exposed to heat or light. It can damage some of your household surfaces. It can be highly reactive if mixed with other chemicals. You never want to mix bleach with another product as deadly gases can, can form. And you want to make sure that you have good ventilation in the area that you're using the bleach. Examples of common cleaning agents that should never, never be mixed with bleach. Bleach and vinegar do not mix. It forms highly irritating chlorine gas. Bleach and ammonia that forms toxic chloramine gas. Bleach and rubbing alcohol. Because you'd think that, you know, alcohol is so great and bleach is so great. And them together would be a great combination. No, you don't want to do that. It forms highly toxic chloroform gas. Bleach decomposes over time. So what you want to buy recently produced stock and avoid overstocking. And, you know, with with our people being a bunch of hoarders, you can imagine how, many, how much bleach they took the last time they went to the store. Right. Now, also make sure you dilute, dilute bleach with cold water. Hot water will inactivate it. Render, rendering it ineffective for sterilization. Now, ideally, you want to use masks, you want to use gloves when you're using bleach to clean any surface. And you should dilute it before using it. Infection prevention and control of epidemic and pandemic-prone acute respiratory infections in healthcare recommends diluting bleach containing 5% sodium hydrochloride to 0.05% before you use it. So, basically, that's what, what? Uh, one part bleach to like five parts water? Yeah. Roundabout? Let me see, 0.05%. Uh, or one part bleach to ten parts water. If you want to, yeah, that's that's more like it to to really break break it down. It's it's it, it yeah bleach is is dangerous like that. Then you have hydrogen peroxide, and everybody loves hydrogen peroxide. It is great when it comes to its ability to kill or inactivate bacteria, viruses, spores, yeast, and fungi. Excellent. A list of, bra of brand name sterilants and disinfectants cleared by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration that contains 1% to 7.5% hydrogen peroxide can actually be found on the FDA website. The CDC says... Hydrogen peroxide works by producing destructive hydroxyl-free radicals that can attack membrane lipids, DNA, and other essential cell components. Catalase, produced by aerobic organisms and faculative an anaerobi an anaerobes that possess cytochrome systems, can protect cells from metabolically produced hydrogen peroxide by degrading hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen. Now, this defense is overwhelmed by the concentrations used for disinfection. Commercially available 3% hydrogen peroxide is stable and effective for disinfecting a wide range of surfaces. Contrary to bleach, Hydrogen peroxide is molecularly very similar to water. It just has an additional oxygen atom. So it's uh, water is H2O, hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. 
So it doesn't produce any dangerous compounds when, when, when it's breaking down. When, as you compare that to bleach, that can be pretty dangerous. Its inherent safety, as long as you don't drink it, makes it an excellent choice for home sanitation. It works well with gargling too. And as a mouthwash. But don't drink it. An even better alternative is accelerated hydrogen peroxide, AHP, which is said it is sold under the brand name Rescue and some others. Compared to pharmaceutical grade 3% hydrogen peroxide, AHP actually works much faster. So you don't need to wet the surface for as long and uh, AHP can kill virus in, viruses in as little as 30 seconds so that cuts down on your cleaning time according to solutions designed for healthcare AHP is composed of hydrogen peroxide surface acting agents known as sulfacants sulfactants sorry wetting agents a substance that reduces the surface tension of a liquid causing the liquid to spread across or penetrate more easily the surface of a solid, and chelating agents, which is a substance that helps to reduce metal content and or hardness of water. The ingredients are all listed on the EPA and Health Canada inserts list, and the FDA generally regarded as safe to list. All chemicals used in the formulation of AHP are commonly found in commercial and industrial cleaners and disinfectants. Now, according to Virox Technologies, a manufacturer of AHP, Health Canada named AHP the surface disinfectant of choice for healthcare facilities during the 2003 SARS outbreaks. Overall, AHP appears to be one of the best and safest broad-spectrum vir vir viricidals available. Uh, last last my, my, my spot just now. Um, let me see, how much more time do I have? I have a little more time before I get into musical therapy. There's another common staple that can be used to disinfect viruses and that is 10% malt vinegar and that is made from malted barley grain which is also used to make beer which is uh, well a second fermentation turns ale into vinegar that's just how the chemistry works now as noted in the 2010 article effectiveness of common household cleaning agents in reducing the viability of human influenza A or H1N1 published in PLOS One. They said our findings indicate that it is possible to use common low technology agents such as 1% bleach, 10% malt vinegar or 0.1% washing up liquid to rapidly and completely inactivate influenza virus. Makes you wonder why they're giving us a flu vaccine, right? Thus, in the context of ongoing pan of the ongoing pandemic, and especially in low resource settings, the public does not need to source specialized cleaning products, but can rapidly disinfect potentially contaminated surfaces with agents readily available in most homes. The addition of any 1% bleach, 50% and 10% malt vinegar and 1% I'm not getting how they're presenting this. The addition of any 1% bleach, 50% and 10% malt vinegar, and 1%, 0.1% and 0.1% and 0.01% washing up liquid were all effective at rapidly reducing viable virus, viable virus below the limit of detection. 
while a low concentration of vinegar, 1%, was no more effective than hot water alone. Well, it would be a good idea not to mix the 1% bleach with the malt vinegar and the dishwashing liquid, apparently. But you can use either or. Now, while a strong oxidizing agent such as bleach is effective at reducing both genome detection and virus in infectivity, low pH and detergent are equally efficacious, efficacious as in effective <laughs> viricidal agents. These results also indicate that while vinegar and detergent disrupt the viral envelope proteins, reducing ineffective ineffectivity, only bleach disrupts the viral genome. Now, while 10% malt vinegar appears to be effective enough as a viral disinfectant, distilled white vinegar with an acetic acid range of or an acetic acid range of 4% to 8% is a rather poor choice. According to Talk Clean to Me, a blog by experts in chemical disinfection for infection prevention, they say the various organic acid disinfectants typically lack a broad spectrum of kill compared to higher level disinfectants such as bleach and hydrogen peroxide. You may be thinking, wait, vinegar and acetic acid have been used for hundreds of years as methods of disinfection and sanitation. Well, guess what? It is important that you note that these only show strength against relatively easy to kill organisms. Things like your pseudonomas. Pseudem pseudomonas. Yeah. There is no current data that concludes that organic acids bolster uh, a broad spectrum of kill. Basically, in short, white vinegar has a low speed of disinfection. So you'd have to leave it on for at least 10 minutes. And it only kills most easily destroyed microbes. Now, with that said, you could boost the effectiveness of white vinegar by using it in combination with hydrogen peroxide. One thing that you must note here is that you must use them separately and not mixed together. As a chemical reaction will form a highly corrosive and unstable form of parasitic acid. That's a recipe by Susan Sommer, Associated Dean of College of Agriculture and Life Sciences at Virginia Tech is offered by cleaning products today. She's saying pour 3% hydrogen peroxide into, a, into one spray bottle and distill white vinegar, 5% acetic acid, into a second spray bottle. Do not mix. Don't mix them together in one bottle because they'll create an unstable and highly corrosive, corrosive form of parasitic acid. Clean the surface with soap and water. Dry with clean cloth or paper towel. Spray the surface with either the hydrogen peroxide or the vinegar. The order doesn't matter. Just don't spray them on at the same time. Because again, when they're mixed, they will cause an unstable form of parasi para parasitic acid. Now, you let that sit for five minutes before wiping it off with a clean paper towel. And then what you do is do the same thing with the second bottle. So if you use the vinegar first, let it sit for five minutes, dry it off, then you come back and you spray with the, with the um, hydrogen peroxide. And you let that sit for five minutes. And then you clean it off. So if your aim is to disinfect and sterilize, 
you want to keep in mind that you need to clean the surface first. Soap and water is likely one of the best alternatives as a soap will effectively inactivate viruses. Once the surface is clean of dirt and sticky grime and anything like that, you can spray your chosen disinfectant on the surface and let it sit for several minutes and then you wipe it clean. The time required will depend on the disinfectant that you use. But you clean the surface first and then you sterilize it. Which is why hand sanitizer is so effective unless ineffective unless you wash your hands. And that is wash your hands with soap and water. Clean clean the surface. For those who are in the restaurant industry or the food industry, typically they use three compartment sinks. There is one for wash, one for rinse, one for sterilize. And they're done in that order. So you have to wash first. That's your soap and water. You wash your dishes. You rinse your dishes. And then you go to the sterilizer, to the drain. You don't sterilize, wash, rinse, drain. And you don't wash, sterilize, rinse, drain. You wash, you rinse, you sterilize, and you drain. Pretty much the same thing with the treatment of your hands. You wash your hands with soap and water, then you can use some hand sanitizer and sterilize it after. People are, are bypassing the, the washing of the hands and going straight to the hand sanitizer and thinking that they're protecting themselves. What are you protecting yourself from? And how much protection are you actually administering? Because one of the things you also want to consider is how much you're killing with that hand sanitizer. You also have some good bacteria lingering on your hands. You're killing those too. So not to say that soap and water doesn't take away from those, but hey, <laughs> you have more of a chance of keeping the good ones than getting rid of them. So soap and water. Leave the hand sanitizer until you absolutely have to. When, when, when the soap and water is not readily available, then you use it as a stopgap. Not a replacement, a stopgap. Okay? Cool. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the effectiveness of NSAIDs as it relates to COVID-19. And uh, a little bit of brata for you. <laughs> a little brata. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit of something extra for you with 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 cleaning and sterilizing surfaces. It's one of the best household things to use. You have bleach, you have hydrogen peroxide, you have vinegar. Don't mix them. Do not, do not, do not. Did I say do not? Do not mix them. Please do not. If you're using bleach. Please use it in a well-ventilated area. If you're using hydrogen peroxide, use it alone. If you're using vinegar, use it alone. Do not mix bleach with peroxide or bleach with vinegar or peroxide with vinegar. Don't mix and match. Don't, don't mix. Do not mix. Do not mix. I don't know how many times I can say it. I don't know, many, I don't know how many more times I can say it. Please. Do not mix. <sighs> okay. So, as we close out tonight and we get into our musical therapy, I just want you to remember those things. And I want you to go ahead and look up what might work for you. You know, you, you you may have a little bit of a respiratory issue and find that bleach doesn't work for you and you'd have to definitely go with something else. Check to see. You can double check on those times that those products, peroxide or, or, or vinegar, work on cleaning surfaces and see how your schedule works out with them. Because, you know, at the end of all of this, when people are out and about again, whatever habit you develop now, 
will be the habit that you have then when you're free to roam about at, at will. That would be what you want to start doing now. So by then, you know exactly how to mix your disinfectant. You know, you, 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 you have so much of a, of a better way of dealing with cleaning and sanitizing your space. And that is what we want to do. But in the midst of it all, as we go through and we push through and we fight through this 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 corona, this SARS CoV two or COVID nineteen, whatever you want to call it, this virus that is crippling our communities right now, as we fight through. I just want to encourage you not to give up. I I heard two stories tonight of elderly people recovering from this. Two. One of them being a 96-year-old recovering from COVID-19. It's not that it's a death sentence. It is not. What I'd love to find out is the kind of treatment that that, that person was, was getting that helped them to recover. And I'm I'm doing my best to get that information also. But we don't have to give up. And as long as we don't give up and we, 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 we focus on getting healthy and we focus on interacting with each other positively, we may not be physically doing it, but we're positively interacting with, with each other, then we stand to win. So, as we get into our musical therapy, that's just what I want to keep in mind tonight, okay? Cool. And we'll be kicking it off with a little B-fly lady die. The track is called Just Never Give Up.
I want to say thanks to GMAP Music Solutions for sponsoring this segment of the show. It's called Musical Therapy. GMAP Music Solution takes care of your light and stage production services, musical equipment, audio DJs, uh, audio engineers, uh, DJs, bands, musicians, singers, and so much more. They bring your event to life. Give them a call, 754-307-GMAC. That's 754-307-4622. Let them know you heard about them on a night shift to DJ Kevin Stew, yeah? Michael Grammy Rose. Let's call everybody going to scare. Someone and let them know this generation has scared. Everybody gone scared. 
just cool no man, bad man love the two no man. This is on a wrong cause. Working out the Royal Blue. It's called just cool. Yeah. I come from the peer sphere. Killers a million, the villains a peer fear. But number boss and the tug them the peer fear. Babies having babies in the day here. Go 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 Gaza. I do peer sphere. Tell the wrong class I make your brain wave. But I run fast, white in the race fear. Worse than bleach when you block it, I stay clear. I do place in a show unless the green ready. Only mama them know and respect at least Kelly. I do place so them know all the text when I read every. If you have an issue, people magazine ready oh. But I'm sure you go to the see messes oh. Where your eye grades make you breathe every oh. At a place that I'm preach education is the key And dreadlocks cannot free and just cool no man Bad man know the rule no man Bad man go on a school no man Bad man know the tool no man Let's just cool no man Bad man know the rule no man Bad man go on a school no man Bad man know the tool no man Let's just yeah. I come from the place that Everywhere is a bar, cheer shot. Let us stay in the car, cheer shot. Everywhere is a church with a prayer sack. Aliens with the white knives, look at the airjacks. Each idea with the nine white, cause they're here black. Every grid in them fine high, but them here must disappear. Every guideline to them tear shot. Who learned to get sign of the times that I would turn the page? From my place to my person and the march, cause the man's a revolver from 238. Who learned to get talk to all day, well I would turn to page? From my place to them preach, education is the key. Who lock it, it can seem like school right now, say. School no man, bad man know the rule no man. Bad man go on a school no man, bad man know the tool no man. Let's just school no man, bad man know the rule no man. Bad man go on a school no man. Tell your wife from a side with them the mind making hella rise genocides and enterprise Many die at any time Body fine but never identify don't mind When you hide it's never wise Cut in the nine go like a nine and in the life The fear links are nine nine for nine lives It's a fine life when you smile or when you cry Then you walk into the pressure depression in your eyes I come from a place where there's another surprise I come from a place where you make it as a surprise And many ready for envy and searching for your demise The mother of vendetta you never can rectify Burn a burn testify you never can testify you never can testify, burn a burn, testify, you never testify. Cool no man, bad man know the rule no man. Bad man go on a school no man, bad man know the tool no man. Eh, just cool no man, bad man know the rule no man. Bad man go on a school no man, bad man know the tool no man. Eh, just why should I listen to what your granny said? Should I listen to what your teacher said? Why should I listen to what your schooler said? Yeah, man. New music from Ed Robinson. Yeah. Channeling his inner Tosh. Enough is enough. Catch this one. Don't the virus. Coffee's just 19. Don't the virus. It's called. Not a virus here, Clark. Confucius 19, yo. Sick of you. Yo, ever since that day you came on this earth, you cause us pain, you make us hurt. Yes, we've been blind, but now the world can see. You're not alone around here. Take your owners and flee. Watch when a Lucifer, yo, don't the virus. Confucius 19, yo. We're in a welcome round here. Don't the virus, yo. Where you for? Confucius 19, yo. Carry some of them oppressors when you leave. You like an evil spirit, you locked us down. We could not make one single sound. But like a yard man, we'll use the words and free the nation, free as the birds. <laughs> Together we'll chant the virus. Just about everybody will be chanting this. Let's believe. Confucius 19. Right now, we're going to tell you this enough. Our doctors and nurses, your respect is still. Keep on fight the fight. 
to the last one here. Much respect to the doctors so and nurses. Till that day when we can congregate, keep on share this love, but let the virus kill the hate. So until then, let's chant Dirty Virus. I hope you know we have some more class. Confucius 19. Yeah. Stop off and put them together. Don't the virus. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> uh, uh. 19. Yeah. A yep. long time you remind we are these germs, yeah. Don't the virus, yeah. Hey. Oh, we want to call you right here. Confucius 19, yeah. Now I'm interested in remembering your name. This one will be around for a while. Ed Robinson channeling his, e- his inner Peter Tosh. We are trying to draw you Andrew B's. That's what this called. Jaja, I'm a shield. Thank you very much. Truly appreciate love that. So we close out this musical therapy for this health to love night. Thank you for it tonight. Truly appreciate love you hanging around, stirring the pot. Inviting y'all to catch me at the same time, 10 p.m. right here, KevinStew.com. For Real Talk Wednesday, immediately following Marlon and Real Rockers. Everybody tune into Real Rockers. When you get done with Marlon, come to KevinStew.com. Now let's have some real talk, eh? But until then, good morning, good afternoon, good day to you wherever you are in the world. From right here in sunny South Florida. Yeah, it's still sunny. Even at night. I bid you good night. Until later on.
to share that moment. If you can video it, you can broadcast it. And Pulse E-Media Group has the tools you need. Weddings, birthdays, funerals, graduations, church services, parties, seminars, you name it. Pulse E-Media Group can provide you with a secure medium controlled by you to broadcast your event. Contact us at www.pulseemediagroup.com for more information. Pulse Emedia Group, when being in the moment is priceless. Greetings and salutations, one and all. You're invited to tune in to the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew. It airs on Mondays with Community and Finance, Tuesdays with Healthy Love, and Wednesdays with Real Talk from 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern Time. Come spend some time interacting in the stew pot where we keep things bubbling and wind down in musical therapy. The Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew is on kevinstew.com where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment. <laughs> 